Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. And yes, just to piss off everybody who thinks that a resolution less than 4K is potato quality, I'm doing this in standard definition. And also because it was gonna doing as I'm doing tester coil videos, I cannot use this camera because you know what this camera does when I use such a device. So anyway, what I'm going to do today is get this out of the shot because that's got nothing to do with it. So I'm going to make another Tesla coil but I'm going to do it the cool dude Clem way. So I've got a primary here. This is the one I used in my solid state Tesla coil which I've just modified. As you can see all I've done is I've removed the top load and just left the breakout point. Because these things seem to work better without a top load when doing vacuum tube Tesla coils. And this is just a low power test, which is why I'm using a my GU50, my one remaining GU50, because if you might remember I toasted the other one in a previous experiment. Hooked it up to a microwave oven transformer and that was the end of that. So this one is only going to be empowered off 650 volts at the most from this power supply that I've made. Now this is just one that I've knocked together. I have no idea what the resonant frequency of the secondary is or what the inductance of the primary is or anything like that. I mean we could do a lot of complicated calculations but you know what? It. We're gonna do this the cool dude Clem way. So first of all, let's just um, turn it on and see if it works. I've got my meter here, so if we get a very low voltage going into the circuit, I'll know something's wrong. So let's see if it does anything. It's all warmed up and ready to go. And nothing. Now we're only getting about 386 volts into the circuit. So, the circuit's pulling a lot more current than it should do. So, I think my feedback is the wrong way around. So I'm just going to reverse that. Right, feedback coil is connected the other way around now. So let's see if it does anything this time. Well, the voltage is a lot higher. We've got 563 volts. It doesn't appear to be doing anything. But maybe we can persuade it. Right, first of all, let's just test that it is producing an RF field with this compact fluorescent light. Alright. See if we can get any spark off this. Okay, we can draw an arc. Oh, and we do have a little bit of breakout now. So, that tells me I've got the feedback the right way round. So now we know that works, we've got to find out the right amount of capacitance to use across the primary. Now these are the capacitors I'm using. 10,000 volt 2.2 nanofarad caps. So let's see what we get if we take one of them out of the circuit. So that's now only three capacitors. Right, I'm going to start the circuit again. Let's see if we get any breakout. Okay, we don't have as much breakout this time. Hardly any breakout. Still getting a spark. Which you probably didn't see. Because I don't know if I was filming the camera at it, so... Let's go down a little bit with the capacitors. Alright, let's see what we get with just two capacitors in the circuit. Oh, it's having a hard time doing anything now.
So now we're going to go down to just one capacitor. Oh, and do note, I am turning the power off before I do anything. So this is just one capacitor. And yes, to the thousand people commenting in, I know these are not the best capacitors to use. But they're all I have. So you just have to deal with it. Right, this is with just one capacitor. And it's barely working at all. So, I think we need more capacitors. Well, I said I was going to need some more capacitors, so I think this should be enough. And in fact it is, because I've only used six of them. Six capacitors, and we're in resonance. Now I am going to ramp this up with a much bigger valve. So, I'm not going to be using this wheely little thing for too much longer, but these are just the low power tests. So, you're not going to be staring at little wimpy sparks for much longer. But, what I want to do is adjust the secondary's height. Because the position of the secondary relative to the primary is going to affect the magnetic coupling. So, I can move this up and down, and I should be able to find a point where the magnetic coupling is at its best. Now, the thing is, I did try raising the primary, but that didn't really affect it in any positive way. It actually made the output a lot worse. So instead, I'm going to start with the secondary, right at the bottom, and then raise it up a little bit, test it, raise it up a little bit more, and test it until I get the best output. And to mesh the output, because I cannot go alone by the size of the breakout, I got this handy dandy little device that I made. It's an RF detector, it's really simple. This thing is dead simple. Just got a simple swing needle meter. And on the back, yeah, there's, uh, there's nothing to it. I mean, yeah. I mean, here's our antenna, which is this piece of wire here. Then there's a coil out of switch mode power supply and diode and a capacitor and well you know that's it that's that's the whole thing right there a nice thing about that is it's self-powered so it will run off the rf energy from the coil and another thing i've added over here is a staccato circuit just to make things a little bit easier on the tube which is again really simple a little mosfet based circuits there's the mosfet right there and that's connected between the cathode and the ground. So now, I can has to cato. Certainly can, yes. And it sounds a lot more like a Tesla coil now. And, although you cannot really see it, It's even registering on the meter. Well, okay, I think we're just about ready to ramp this thing up now because the red dot is where the coil was originally and this dotted line is how much I've raised the coil by because I just decided to mark each position of the coil and I'd mark it with a green dot if the output was improved. So raise it up a little bit, test it, mark whether it got better or worse. And right about here, we seem to get the best output. Now still nothing spectacular, but it is better. And hopefully this is not corrupting the data on my cam. And just out of curiosity, let's see this on constant wave again. So I've connected the cathode back up directly to the ground. I know it's all a bit how you're doing, but let's just have a look. There we are on constant wave. It looks a lot more impressive in real life than it does on the camera. So we know that works. So now it's time to ramp it up with one of these. And instead of 500 volts, we're going to use 5,000 volts. Ah. 
Okay, well here we are in the shed, ready to go. Now I did try powering this off the 600 volt supply and that didn't do hardly anything. So I think it's going to fare a little better on the 5000 volt supply. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't powered one of these on a microwave oven transformer without a ballast before, so that's what we're going to do right now. And we're armed and ready to go. I've got a remote switch, which I'm standing by. So let's turn it on and see if it works. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Well, after that little bit of a scare, we're ready to try again. I've just noticed, I don't know if you can see it, but if I can just get the camera's light on there... You might be able to notice that the original paint that this had was a kind of a silvery paint. And I just thought this was white paint on wood. And it wasn't. So it was just arcing to the silver paint and I cannot get my camera's light to come off. But hopefully we won't have any more short circuits. So let's try again. All I get. I've fixed all the problems and I'm getting like huge arcs off this thing now. Right, so if I could just find some way to obscure this bulb so when that comes on, because when this is on, there's enough current to make that bulb light up. So I've got to find a way to make that so it doesn't glare into the camera. And also, I think I need to improve the insulation here. Wood does not seem to be good enough. Okay, we're ready to try again. I've replaced all the insulation. So hopefully we shouldn't have any arcs where we don't want any. So, on with the show. Uh... Oh, if only it would show up on the camera. It's working wonderfully, but you just cannot... Oh, this camera sucks. Okay, so this is the last one for the day. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see it a lot better. So, uh... Let's see it in action one last time. Isn't it wonderful? The camera still sucks and you can barely see it. It was just getting bigger, and bigger, and bigger. It was like... It was like... It was like this long. It was like that long, actually. It was huge! I had to turn it off there and then, because I just noticed that my secondary was starting to break down, and I noticed a little wisp of smoke coming off it, so... Yeah. Well, it would be rude to not try and get a proper shot of this. Even though I don't know how much longer this is going to last. So, here it is, one final time. I think that's all we're going to get. Okay, I better shut it off now, because I think... Yeah. I think that's the end of my secondary. I popped it! Just a quick look at the aftermath there. See a little burn right there, and another burn around here. Mmm, <sniffs> smells nice. Anyway, there we go. That's building a vacuum tube tester coil, the cool dude Clemway. And until next time, goodbye. Okay, I better shut it off now, because I think...